Hi, so today is um, August 10, 2018, and I'm at Tesla Tech Conference in uh, Albuquerque, New, New Mexico. And uh, I just asked Russell Anderson uh, a few questions on telepathy. And, you know, I just love him as a, an alien mm, hybrid a soul, and uh, the information that comes from him has a wonderful, clean, and perfect quality. So. He has that connection to uh, higher knowledge, which is wonderful. So, uh, a few, uh, just a brief discussion on telep artificial telepathy. So, enjoy it. Good day. Interface device. Mm -hmm. A brain machine. Yeah, I'll start again. No, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, when you think something, the same nerves that activate, the same nerves in your neck that go to your throat activate as if you were speaking aloud. Even if you're not speaking aloud. So you could say, like, um, the quality of it is not strained. It drop it as the, from heaven. Those words that you're not speaking are still, those nerves in your larynx are still activated, nevertheless. So, you have maybe um, uh, sensors sensors on your head or sensors on your neck, so like a sensor on your neck that's picking up the electrical signals from those nerves going to your larynx. Because those, again, those are the same nerves that are activated when you think as when you speak aloud. So, you have uh, basically what you do is you have someone read the entire dictionary into your computer, into your hard drive, and then have them, have them record those electrical signals from your throat as you're speaking them. Now you have an electrical analog of the spoken word that's also going to be an electrical analog of the thought word, of the non-spoken word, it's going to be the same signal. So now that that can be you know easily translated by the computer, now you have everything, the electrical analog of the spoken word in the computer. Now the computer can decode your thoughts, anyone's thoughts, because it's going to be a digital signal going into the computer. So anybody, and I've seen this, uh, examples of this, um, Leslie Stahl and Sister Minutes had a segment back in 2009 where they had pretty much perfected this. And before it was only military that was using it like in the, uh, in the 80s. And now the private industry had gotten access to it and perfected it. And uh, I can only think of how far, you know, what, what they're doing now. You know, wireless, wireless telepathy, technological telepathy, you know, everything, you know, no longer you know, wires going up to sensors in your uh, neck, picking up the electrical signals from your, your larynx, the nerves going to your larynx. Instead, wireless. Wireless. So I'm thinking it could be something like that, the technological telepathy. I'm here, but I just want to so that would be perfect for soldiers on a battlefield. No more signals to be intercepted. And you can have a scalar signal, a, a scalar transceiver like we, we discussed uh, earlier, instead of a uh, typical Hertzian RF signal that could be intercepted and decoded, even if it is a brain machine interface. And they have had brain machine interfaces controlling aircraft and drones with 100% precision, more precision than if you had a joystick. And it's like, aha, uh -huh, that's why the ETs use that BMI interface to control their craft mostly. They do have a joystick as backup, the PRs have a joystick as backup, but most of the greys, there's just total brain machine interface all the way. BMI all the way. Have you experienced telepathy? Yes, I have. Interesting issue. Yes, I have. I have. One time in my life. It was uh, 1982, I think. And I was at home. I was still living at home at that time. Where I was at uh, my mom's house in Mount Vernon, New York. Where I had that UFO sighting, the first the spectacular one that I filmed on Super 8. Um, and uh, I heard my sister's voice say, Mom, like that, like she was like, like she was in the same room with my mom, and she was like talking, trying to talk to my mom, and uh, 
as like and we we're saying, is, is Roz in here? Is, is Roz here? And uh, about two seconds later, my dad comes in the front door, and uh, and then about sixty seconds after that, my sister calls on the telephone and says, I was attacked in my apartment on the Upper East Side and I was almost raped. You know, and so and then later on, like about a week later, my mom asked her, what were you thinking? And when, you know, that happened, you know, and she says, I was thinking I needed to call you. And we were sitting in the breakfast nook of our, of our uh, kitchen, and I heard it too. And then I realized, days later, I didn't hear her, my sister's voice with my ears. I heard it right inside my head. That's telepathy. Ah, so how could you train telepathy? Suppose you pick ten of the telepaths and you want to train them more. So what interface should be there? Biofeedback training. All kinds of biofeedback training. They'll pull out your ears and all this kind of stuff. Biofeedback training can be used also to develop other other uh, advanced tra traits, which are actually ancient traits that we've forgotten, like telekinesis, uh, clairvoyance, telepathy, of course. Uh, biofeedback training. Biofeedback training is a powerful tool for increasing any human uh, propensity, no matter what it is. You can train yourself with biofeedback and training and brain and training with white noise and pink noise machines. So uh, I'm sure that that's now, how. We have two people. How to build the biofeedback? I mean, the responsibility. For the uh, circuit for the uh, Probably, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I had to think about it a little, but um, probably two people who are very connected spiritually, because te telepathy, like all thoughts, isn't generated by the physical brain. It's generated by the spirit or soul. The brain is simply an instrument, like a lens. So uh, we call thought spiritual energy. That's a very important distinction. So uh, our consciousness isn't generated by our brain. It's generated by our soul or spirit, just like our thought. Spiritual energy. Right. Very similar to normal EM energy, but more bioetheric, more having to do with the ether than our crude matter bodies. More fine matter than crude matter, energy, fine matter. Now, uh, how do we help people to get into the higher state? Say we want people in the telepathic state. Um, I'd say do the same thing that yogi masters do, that Tibetan monks do, that kung fu masters do, tai chi masters do. They train themselves to get all their chakras in resonance. All their chakras are in resonance. And they're able to, at that point, absorb energy up from the earth or from the atmosphere or from directly from the ether itself, cohering the ether just like nature does. Now, suppose it is uh, someone who is uh, very far from that state. Is there a way that you can check out Dis Distance? Oh, yeah. You mean like the physical distance? No, 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 no. no. Uh, you know, like uh, people who are not ready to meditate and well, the winter is certainly dry. That's, that's well, there's probably some other way, but the meditation and the biofeedback training definitely would help short circuit the process and make it less time consuming. That's for sure. Um, that's the way to improve on any skill, I think. Um, you know, just go about it the the quick way, uh, the quick the quick way, which is not necessarily the easiest way. But um, I'd say go about it like you would learn. Uh, Learn to be a Kung Fu master, or a Tai Chi master, or a, a yogi. You know, when I was in, uh, not Holland, uh, uh, Beijing, China. I was in Beijing, China five years ago. We were invited there to do demos and stuff and uh, on the, the soil technology and everything like that. And they laid out the red carpet for us. Uh, we had a professor that was part of our group in China called Professor Sung. And before a banquet, and every dinner in China was a banquet, every every dinner, before a banquet, there was a big round table which we could rotate, you know, to get the different meals. Um, before a banquet one night in downtown Beijing, um, Professor Sung performed a demonstration of qi energy on them. He went into some kind of state of deep meditation for about a minute, maybe less than a minute. <coughs> and then, and then, he uh, draws up and has this energy. He says, put your arm out. 
Well, actually, before he does that, he has put my arm out, and my, he tries to push my arm down, and he can't do it. Then he does this chi thing where the you know he's concentrating and somehow is able to focus this energy into his body, and then he pushes my arm down easily, and then he takes this energy and he like throws it into a cup on the table, a teacup, and then he puts it into me from the teacup. And then he takes it out of me and puts it back into the teacup, then he draws it back into himself. By the time the demonstration was over, he left no doubt in my mind that these so-called subtle energies are real, and they're not subtle at all. They're very powerful. I, I was 90, 90, 99% of the way there before the demonstration, and after the demonstration I was 101% there, that this stuff is real. This Chinese culture, you know, is much older than Western civilization by thousands and thousands of years, you know, at least 5,000 years. So, in all that time, we have uh, Chinese medicine, acupuncture. I remember my dad, my dad's a physician, and I asked him in the late 70s, hey dad, does acupuncture work? And he goes, oh no, it's bunk. Later on, in the early 90s, I said, hey dad, I just, you know, asked him again, you know, does acupuncture work? Oh yeah, it works, and it works great. <laughs> Boy, so he came around 180 yeah, degrees. Like I'm not sure it took him a little time, but I guess he'd seen, uh, you know, hard evidence, which is always the last arbiter. Suppose we use psychedelics to bring people to the And the last, the last time. I don't know about psychedelics. I mean, I've heard of that also working, and it does work. But the psychedelics have a tendency to blast the mind in all di different directions at once, instead of focusing like a laser beam, which is what you want. A laser beam right into the other person's pineal gland. What you want to do is exercises that open up that pineal gland, um, that forces blood into that pineal gland, because most Earth humans' pineal gland is calcified, and especially in the United States where they have fluoridated water. So uh, one way is to like uh, lift weights and do like push-ups that forces blood into the pineal gland to bring it back to life instead of calcified. So you want to awaken your pineal gland. That's the single most important thing you can do. Um, other than the other things I mentioned, somehow just reactivate the pineal gland. I need to be a little more. Now, in the brain. People in the in the box. You put two people in the box. They would be linked to the water. Maybe through something homeopathic, but I wouldn't hazard a guess. I haven't really done any uh, done any uh, research on that, so it would be just you know, it would be just speculation on my part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I would rather be informed speculation than just speculation, speculation, talking out of my rear end. <laughs> What's that? No, but can you raise something? My wife is, yeah. And your wife is too. So much I left no doubt in my mind, also, that that's real. One night, I was into the The hollower? And it was all, it was all, he runs the plant, the internal thing, you know. And then I had to find a Oh yeah. no. And then back in 1990, I was taken to the school. I was bi-located in the learning. I was actually working in Phoenix. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. yeah. Flight systems inside. It's a mirror. Right. Right after right. work. Flight sims. I had to find. I had to find her at that. Yeah, it was on the. Uh, really the DC. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and then. No, it was the then, McDonald's. Then it was like broke up with her, and it was like okay, therapy, like intense therapy. And let's see if we can. Right after work. I wanted to get some camera equipment. Well, you know, the so whole, I drove down the whole, 17 um, towards downtown. Mm -hmm. you know, and then I was set up. I could drive my car. And I was by located. You mean your your soul separated from your body? Taken up. Wow. Your etheric body went up. But I can do the two things simultaneously. Interesting. I can drive and walk. So it was like you had fully aware in two different states. Yeah. 
That's was pretty interesting. Place. That's pretty interesting. And I could fully function in both places. Do, do mind if I That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, if only you don't care. I don't, uh, I don't care if you agree. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm driving to downtown to this camera store, and they took me. Upstairs. Sounds like uh, like a science fiction movie. And there I was in real life. In real life. I was before some someone conveying a message to me. And then I was taken to meet they never identify themselves. Even when I was taken downstairs back in the early 80s, mm. when they took me downstairs, I have no idea who they were. Mm. They don't tell. Them. They don't tell you who they are. I just kind of surmise. Lucifer. Well, I have seen UFOs. I've seen the technology in dreams and in real life. The I can describe thing, the what they look like. Is them, the aliens themselves. Yeah. Well, I have, I have no memory of seeing any aliens at all, just the hardware. What does that say about me as a person? Well, maybe that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, what I've been doing for the last uh, 30 years. See, we're on a mission. Bingo. We have a mission. Bingo. So how did it See, I had to leave. See, back in 2007, I was living in Indiana. But I knew I wanted to come out here to Phoenix. That's why I got the place in Prescott. We might end up in Prescott. That's one of the proposed uh, sites along with Reno. And I'm hoping it's Reno. Well, you know, I had, a, I had a vision. I was given a vision of my future. That's. That was back in 78. See, for me, I was in high school. See, for me, everything happens on ABC. So the the sort of technology eight. is based on the game of, of duh. The sort of technology is based on eight squares. That's part of the dream one. It's hot. Well, you know about that. Very interesting. And there are other intrinsic See, I'm locked into eights. Every ten years, something incredible happens. How did they look upstairs? Well, what I saw was what looked like a bearded bean conveying a message. I don't remember what the message is. And then I was taken into another room. And in this room, I could only describe them as a beam of light, seated in a chair, surrounded by a sphere. My mom had an experience like that, but it was like a near-death experience. When she went into heart failure, she got a visit by a being of light. And she said the yeah. being looked like as if you're, the being was made out of what you see on the TV screen when there's no signal. Just the, the white noise, static. And she said the being touched her arm, and where the being touched her arm, the sensation of icy cold traveled up her arm, up her arm, up her arm, up her arm. And she had the feeling, as she said, she didn't know how she knew, but if that iciness went to her heart, she would die. So she just reached over to um, my father, and being like dissolved, it just dissolved. It just became slowly more and more transparent over a couple of seconds and just vanished. And then the feeling well, actually feels like this mm -hmm. Literally living in a bubble. Wow. Like I was granted free wishes. Almost like a wall or something. Yeah, yeah, but at the time, I had no clue. So you take that to me. Well, don't tell me what they are. They won't come true. I'll be right back. So how did they look downstairs? There's another being downstairs, and there's one upstairs. <laughs> How the downstairs being looked at. And we're 
stuck in the middle. Sure. I mean, we're, in this, we're in this chess game of moves that are being played out. Uh -huh. And we are the chess players. Sure. Players or figures? And I was... Um, Pieces. Yeah, because I was only upwards. Sure. So this one, as I came up here, comes out for I had to. Ramdas said. I had to go like this. The final conclusion is not to love to love the meat. Right. So I went like this, and then. There's no other choice. Yeah, we're stuck in this game. Good not follow him. <laughs> Good news, not for long. Mm -hmm.